The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. We're very glad to have you with us here as we begin another episode of Grace in Focus from the Grace Evangelical Society. Today we're looking at a question and an answer in the eschatology category. Where in Scripture does it say or indicate that there might be a slight time gap, a period of a few days between the rapture and the beginning of the tribulation period? Our discussion leaders today are Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates, and I believe that you'll find what they have to say very interesting. And we'll get into that in just a moment. I want to tell you first of all about our website, faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. And you will find there a lot of information about the Grace Evangelical Society, about who we are, about our resources, about how you can support us. And very importantly, right now, we want you to know about our National Grace Evangelical Society Conference. We do it every year. The 2023 version happens May the 22nd through the 25th. And we want you to plan to be with us. Here's something Ken Yates had to say about the National Conference. One thing about the conferences that I really enjoy is the fellowship. We go to lunches together, we go to dinner together, and you always see people sitting around talking about passages that they're dealing with or certain issues that free grace people are talking about. And it's so great to be around these guys. You know, you'll see them, they'll do a plenary, and then you can sit around afterwards or go to lunch afterwards and say, hey, let's dive into that a little bit deeper. Last year, they had these big coffee pots out there in the morning, you know, five or six of us just sitting around talking about different theological issues. We also had all these games that were out there, putt-putt. It's just a fun time, and it's relaxed, and I just can't recommend it enough. Well, thank you, Ken. And friend, you can find out more and get registered at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. Now, Ken and Bob with today's question and answer. Welcome to Grace and Focus. I'm with Ken here. He's got a shirt on that said, y'all need Jesus. You've been wearing this all over the Metroplex. That's right. I'm from the South. I'm from South Carolina. And we, we say y'all. And uh, it's, it's, it's good when you talk about Greek, you know, when you say, hey, this is plural. And Paul <laughs> is not saying you like you, Bill. It's a, He's saying y'all. You know? <laughs> However, I can use y'all with one person, can I? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. So what's up? You have a question for us, I believe. Yes. We and ha- I think it's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. This man's name is Peter. Uh, we'll just call him Pete. He has a question about the timing of the rapture and the beginning of the tribulation. It says, I'm curious, where in the scriptures does it say that the rapture occurs a month or two before the tribulation? And, and That's obvi- based on something I said. Yes. Or wrote. And I'm sure that the question is springing from this idea that, as we've all been taught as pre-trib rapture people, we were basically all taught that as soon as the rapture occurs, the tribulation begins right away. That's the beginning. That's what of, I thought. Sure. The beginning of the when seven years. When I graduated years. from Dallas, I held that view. Right. And I guess he must have heard you say that there's going to be a delay between the rapture and the beginning of the tribulation period. Yeah. And let me explain that real quick, Ken. Around the year 2000, I went to the pre-trib study group conference in Dallas. And I've been a member of the pre-trib study group for 30 or 40 years. I don't know. That group holds to classic dispensationalism. I hold to classic dispensationalism. Well, I was at that conference around the year 2000, and one of the speakers said, we know that the rapture will occur before the tribulation and that there's a gap. And I'm sitting there listening going, what gap? And he said, 30 to 60 to 75 days between the signing of the covenant in Daniel 9.27— And the rapture, this guy said, if the rapture and the tribulation occurred simultaneously, it would mean the rapture was occurring while the man of sin was signing the covenant with Israel, Daniel 9, 27. For those things to occur simultaneously, there would have to be some sort of word in the press that this treaty was about to be signed, in which case the rapture would now not be signless. There would be a sign of the rapture. The other argument is the end of Daniel chapter 12, and I think you have those verses, 
Because there's a gap between the end of the tribulation and the start of the millennium. Yes, in Daniel chapter 12, starting in verse 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away. Now, that's talking about the middle of the tribulation, correct? Right. The middle of the tribulation, when the man of sin puts an end to the daily sacrifice. And the abomination of desolation is set up. That's the man of sin. There shall be 1,290 days. So we got to stop right there. Three and a half years. Right. Three and a half years of 30-day months, right. which is what they were operating on, is 1,260. So 1,290 is already 30 days extra. So now we're talking about the end of the tribulation period that the end of the tribulation will not begin the millennial kingdom. There's going to be, according to that verse, 30 days. Right. The tribulation ends after 1260, but we're told here there's going to be 1290 days, but then in the very next verse, it's more than that. Right. Blessed is he who waits and comes to 1,335 days. Now that's 75 more than 1260. Right. And so basically what dispensationalists say is there's going to be some things that take place on earth after the tribulation before the millennium. One of them we know of is in Matthew 25, 31 to 46. It's called the judgment of the sheep and the goats. That is Gentiles. The sheep are Gentile believers. The goats are Gentile unbelievers. And they'll be judged sometime in these 75 days. I think also probably the judgment seat of Christ will take place during these 75 days, although some people think it'll take place either in the air or in heaven during the seven years of the tribulation, so we can't be sure. It's also possible there'll be some cleanup during these 75 days. Yeah, some of the Old Testament prophets speak of that, right? I think so. Yeah. And, I mean, at the beginning of the millennium, they're still going to be cleaning up some of the bones and marking the bones sure. and things, I think, for the first seven years of the millennium. But a lot of the cleanup will take place during the 75 days, and evidently the topography of the earth will change such that I think we don't wait till the new earth. I think during the millennium, the highest mountain is Jerusalem. Right. And if that's the case, somehow the Himalayas have to come down. <laughs> somehow Mount, or shrink, Mount right? McKinley has to come down. But there's going to be 75 days. In other words, the millennial kingdom is not going to begin immediately, according to Daniel 12. And if there is symmetry, you might see a similar 30 or 75 day gap between the tribulation and the start, of I mean, the, the rapture and the beginning of the tribulation. Right. There's certainly nothing in the scriptures that would prohibit that from happening. Right. So the rapture occurs. And there's time for this treaty to be signed, right. which, by the way, it kind of makes sense, right? In the sense that the rapture occurs and think of the turmoil and the confusion and the chaos in the world at this time. Right. And nations that are left behind will be working this out. And if Hodges is right, that it is the revived Roman Empire, Israel is going to be looking for allies. Yep. And that will take a while. I mean, just just as now, if, if, if I'm a president of a country and I'm looking for allies, whether they're military allies or economic allies or whoever they are, I have to go negotiate with them. Well, I'll tell you what else. What if the rapture occurs tomorrow? Well, don't they have to have a temple? Well, couldn't the temple be built in those 75 days? Yes, and, and the other thing about the temple is it doesn't have to be like Herod's temple. Right. It could be a very small structure. Right. And it could certainly be built within 75 days. Right. Of course, there's other things. They have to find a red heifer. Well, they'll find a red heifer sometime during that time. Of course, we don't know exactly when, you know, obviously the temple will be operative during the first half of the tribulation. There'll be this abomination of desolation at the midpoint when the temple is desecrated. But my point is this 75-day gap between the tribulation and the millennium could suggest there'll be a similar gap, and there might be more things than just the signing of the treaty. It could even be building of the temple. It could be the red heifer. It could be lots of things. Sure. For one thing, the two witnesses have to come to faith in Christ. Unless, of course, the Lord just drops Elijah and <laughs> Enoch, who have never died. And if they're the two witnesses... 
Well, God could drop them in anytime he wants. But if these two witnesses are going to be witnessing from the very beginning of the tribulation, somehow they have to come to faith because every believer on earth leaves at the time of the rapture, right? Right. And so unless they just see the rapture right then and, and, and instantly become a believer, then yes, that would be another thing that could happen. Of course, I would throw this out. Let's say you're evangelizing somebody and they're this close to coming to faith and the rapture occurs and they come to faith one second after the rapture. Well, here's a born again person in the rapture because they didn't come to faith before the rapture, but you were witnessing to them before the rapture or maybe you witnessed to them today and they come to faith the next day. Either way, there are probably going to be people who come to faith within hours or minutes or days of the rapture just because people had been talking to them. Now, of course, we're told in 2 Thessalonians there's going to be this great delusion, but I think that's coming upon those who have rejected the truth. You could have people who were open and about to come to faith, and I don't think they'd fall under that great delusion. They're not going to be deluded. And obviously... There's going to be a lot of people who haven't heard about Jesus and the 144,000 evangelists will be going out. And the two prophets. And Bob Bryan argued that this might be the greatest time of evangelistic success in the history of mankind. There might be tens or hundreds of millions coming to faith in Christ during the seven years of the tribulation. We don't really know. But there's going to be a lot of people coming to faith. Because the Lord wants people to come to faith. Right. Sure. And the rapture could be a way to get people's attention. I think it will, although there's going to be a delusion, too. And I don't know what the delusion is going to be, but it'll be a doozy. Well, thank you. And uh, this was a great question by Peter as we think about the rapture and the return of our Lord. And as we do, remember, keep keep grace grace in focus. Zane Hodges' excellent commentary on Romans, entitled Romans Deliverance from Wrath, is available right now on our website, faithalone.org. Get half price through February 28, 2023, when you use the code word ROMANS. That's faithalone.org. Would you be interested in some free ebooks on topics you hear on this program? Well, if you are, you need to come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. On the site, we've got all kinds of free materials, but one of our popular options is our free ebooks on a range of subjects. They're designed to help you mature and grow in your understanding of the faith and scripture. So come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. We are so thankful for our financial partners who keep us on the air. Every gift is tax deductible and very much appreciated. If you'd like to find out how you can give, go to faithalone.org. Would you like to have a chat with Dr. Bob or one of the guests here on the program? Let me tell you how to reach out to the team. You can get us on our email address, which is radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. So next time on Grace in Focus, what is Jesus talking about in John chapter 6 when he mentions eating his flesh and drinking his blood? We will discuss that when next we meet here on Grace in Focus. This is the Grace Evangelical Society reminding you to always keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.